George explores the grain chain with support from farmers and millers across the UK. Hi guys, I've been doing so much baking for my project on the grain chain, I've forgotten to give you any tips about how to cook safely. What do you reckon is the most important thing in the kitchen? The food? <coughs> Aha! Sure, you couldn't cook without food, but to cook safely, preparation comes first. Preparation basically means making sure everything is hygienic. That means clean and safe. Let's start with hygiene. No one wants germs in their food. Yuck! So here's where we start. With lots of warm soapy water. Before you begin cooking, make sure everything, that's all the surfaces and equipment you're going to use, are clean and dry. And don't forget to give your hands a good wash too. If you're sneezing or coughing with a bad cold, well, perhaps you should be in bed and not in the kitchen. And if you've got any cuts, pop a plaster on. Ouch! Ouch! It's not just to keep the germs out of the food. Have you ever gotten lemon juice in a cut? It's really, really painful! Some food needs a good wash too. Raw food like fruit and veg. And don't forget to check the use-by dates too. Something that's really important to remember is that raw meat should be kept well away from other foods because until it's cooked, it can pass germs around. Not nice. A good tip is to have separate knives and chopping boards for raw meat and that'll keep the germs to themselves. <coughs> Oi, birdie, get out of the kitchen. It's always a good idea to keep animals and pets away from the kitchen. They could end up getting hurt, getting in your way, or making things dirty. Sorry, Birdie. There we go. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Keeping things clean. This goes for all sorts of things you might not think about, like tea towels and dishcloths, too. If they're monkey, well, chuck them in the wash. Or if they're worn out, get new ones. And if you need to wipe your hands, use a different cloth to the ones you dry the dishes with. Otherwise, you've guessed it. You're just moving germs around. Phew. So now we've banished the germs. Let's look at safety. My best tip of all is to take your time. Otherwise, all sorts of things can cause accidents. Pan handles poking over the edge of the hob, hot pans that need oven gloves and sharp knives. You're less likely to hurt yourself or drop your precious bread on the floor if you slow down and think about what you're doing. I nearly forgot. Here's something I was making earlier. A brilliant simple sandwich loaf. And yep, it looks done to me. You'll have seen these all over the place. It's a square long loaf that is just perfect for, well, making sandwiches. You can get them ready sliced if you buy them, but I like to make my own and cut my own slices. Did you know it was an American called Otto Frederick Rowe Wedder who invented the first slice and wrap bread machine in 1928? And within five years, 80% of all bread sold in the US was sold sliced. Delicious. See you next time. George explores the grain chain with support from farmers and millers across the UK.